Last night on 60 Minutes, President Trump expressed skepticism about climate change to Leslie Stahl days after the United Nations issued an alarming new scientific study on global warming. At the same time, NASA is winding down its Operation Ice Bridge. That mission flies planes to Antarctica from South America to study ice melt. For the latest installment in our Climate Diaries series, Mark Phillips took two of those flights. And he joined us, joins us now from Punta Arenas, Chile. Mark, good morning. Good morning from Punta Arenas at the southern tip of South America and a place with a 500-year history of scientific exploration. I'm standing on a replica of the ship that Ferdinand Magellan used on the first ever round-the-world voyage, which came through these waters. That there is HMS Beagle, a replica of the ship Charles Darwin sailed on, also through here. But Punta Arenas has never seen anything like what NASA is doing now. It can seem like flying across the surface of a distant frozen planet, which you might expect from NASA. Radar, NASA with you, passing 2004, flight level 310. But this flight is just 1,500 feet above the most remote place on Earth, Antarctica, where the frozen wastes are becoming less frozen all the time. As mission scientist John Sontag says, they're not here for the view. That's because uh, humanity, uh, the nation, and the, and the race, basically, we need to know what's happening to, uh, to the climate, and specifically to sea level. And uh, a lot of what's happening to sea level uh, starts at the poles. And that's, uh, that's when that ice is either liberated or sequestered. Uh, frozen or melted. Or melted. Frozen or melted, that's right. For a decade this time of year, NASA has been flying to Antarctica out of Punta Arenas. We'll say till uh, 6.15 p.m., so another 25 minutes. Now using a 50-year-old DC-8 jammed with high-tech equipment and highly trained scientists. The world's hottest climate science in the world's coldest place. It may look like just snow and ice. But this plane can see a lot more than the eye can see. It's got lasers and radars and cameras and even a gravity sensor, the most expensive thing on board that can map the seabed. I like to think about what we do in a very simplified manner is just taking a yardstick to the ice year after year. And that yardstick is not only finding less ice, it's finding that the ice melting is speeding up. Research stations on the ground can see the ice loss. But to get the big picture, you've got to get up here, says Mission Chief Scientist Joe McGregor. Presently, the Antarctic ice sheet is uh, discharging more than two Olympic-sized swimming pools worth of uh, ice into the ocean every second. Every second. At that rate, Antarctica alone could cause as much as six inches of sea level rise this century then that's of uh, clear concern for coastal communities, not just in the United States, but coastal countries around the world. Why has the melting increased? That's the wordy ice sheet down there. Warming seas have turned a thick, solid sheet of ice attached to the coast into a collection of icebergs linked by a thin film of ice. And that's allowed the massive Fleming Glacier behind it to flow into the ocean at least twice as quickly. There's a nice shelf. It disintegrates. Then what happens? Then what happens is the, the cork is out of the bottle and the ice can accelerate for a while. What used to seem so frozen and so permanent is now fluid and changing fast. After the science, of course, comes the politics. The question for the scientists is, is anybody listening? And that's the subject of the next of these series of climate diaries, Gail, which we'll do tomorrow. Well, we're listening. Thank you very much, Mark Phillips.